Hello learners, welcome to NIOS studio. This program is based on senior secondary chemistry course. We will be discussing about lesson 6, the solid state. I am Dr. Alka Mehrotra. In the previous video, we have discussed about the closed pack structure in 1, 2 and 3 dimensions and different types of voids. Now we will be discussing about the packing efficiency and classification of solids based on electrical conductivity. So the objective is packing efficiency, classification of solids based on their electrical conductivities and their magnetic properties. Now packing efficiency, what exactly is packing efficiency? As we know solids are very closely packed. So how much efficient is a solid is defined by the packing efficiency. So packing efficiency, what is packing efficiency? The solids uh, are how closely packed in the uh, crystal lattice is a uh, packing efficiency because it should be very efficient in packing. There should not be any void. I'm going to discuss this on the board with you. So let's discuss about packing efficiency for simple cubic unit cell. Here, you can see here the, uh, the cube is there and the atoms as I told you is present on the corner that is the lattice point uh, is there and here you have all the uh, atoms present. And in simple cubic uh, cell we have already discussed only at the corners there are eight, uh, I mean each atom is present over there. So there is a formula of packing efficiency. This is a volume of one atom divided by volume of cubic uh, unit cell multiplied by 100%. Now volume of cube, as if we take this side as A, so the volume of cube is A cube. Now you can see over here, the two atoms are there and this A is covered by radii of the two atoms. It means if this is our radius, it means A is equal to 2R. Now here we can say A is equal to 2R, hence A cube is equal to 2R cube that is 8R cube. Now let's put this in a formula. Packing efficiency is the volume of one atom, you know the volume of one atom or sphere is 4 by 3 pi R cube. Now divided by volume of cubic cell, now cubic cell we have already taken out 8 R cube. Now let's put this in the formula and keeping the value of uh, pi is 3.14, put this in that and we will get 52.36 or 52.4%. So this 52.4% is a packing efficiency of a simple cubic cell. It means the remaining parts are the voids. Now let's discuss packing efficiency of body centered cubic cells. Now body centered as we have discussed in the previous video, what is body centered where on each lattice point there will be a cube. So there will be eight, uh, there will be an atom, spheres will be there. So that means one is definitely there. Body means in whole body you can see one sphere is there. So one is here. Now how to find out this little bit geometry you have to, geometrical skills you have to apply over here. So in let's take the triangle EFD. In EFD if you see this is uh, 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 here as we know that all are 90 degrees. So if you see this is also 90 degrees. So hypotenuse is this. So if we put Pythagoras theorem we have hypotenuse square that is B square is equal to A square plus A square that is 2A square. So what will be the value of B? B is root 2A. Now let's check AFD. AFG. Now again here we can see this uh, is again the 90 degree is there. So opposite to that will be your uh, 90 degree angle. So if we take AFD, so this will be C square equals to A square plus B square if we take it as a B. Okay, so now C square is equal to A square plus B square. But 
we have already discussed that b square is equal to 2a square. Now keeping this b square value over here, we have a square plus 2a square which makes 3a square. Now let's take again the uh, uh, cube root of the c value will be root 3a. Now length of the body diagonal that is c that is 4 into r. How 4 into r? Because this 1 r, 1 r, this much as you know we have from here to here the value is c. This is 1 r, 1 r, 1 r and 1 r. That means 4 r. So c is equal to 4 r. 4 r is equal to root 3a. Now how come? Because we have already found out that c is equal to root 3a. So now keeping this value root 3 over here, we get this. Now let's find out the value of r. r is root 3 upon 4 into a. Or we can say a value because we have to find out the volume. a is equal to 4r upon root 3. Again, let's put the value in the formula. Formula as we have already discussed, the packing efficiency is volume of the fill space. Now the fill space is what? This we have already found out. 4 by 3 pi r cube. But how many atoms are there? Two atoms. We have discussed that in body centered, one is in the total and one is more. So 2 into 4 by 3 pi r cube. And what is the area of the total square? That is a cube. But let's put the value of a over here. We get 4r uh, upon root 3 uh, cube. Now, if you solve this equation, we will get 68%. Now, here you can check. This was 52.4. This is 68%. It means this one here, the packing is more. So, it means this solid will be more efficient in packing. This is a face-centered cubic. As you know, in face-centered, uh, there are six faces, means three atoms and one more of this simple cubic cell. So, there are total four atoms over there. Now, let's check. Let's take the uh, triangle ABC. In this, the diagonal is, uh, this is B because again, all are 90 degree. It means this is the hypotenuse. So by applying the Pythagoras theorem, we have B square is equal to A square plus A square. So we get B is equal to root 2A. Now, B is equal to 4A. How? Because if you check this line, how the atoms are arranged? Atom is one here, it means half of the radius. This one here, this is full, it means a diameter, which means 2r and again 1r, that makes 4r. So b is equal to 4r. So now let's uh, 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 put the value of b over here. So 4r is equal to root 2a. Now we are sub, uh, substituting the value of b over here. So a will be 4r divided by root 2 or we can say a is equal to 2 root 2 r we will get. Now each unit cell in cubic cell, uh, this one is 4 spheres rather we can say uh, this 4 uh, uh, atoms are there in that. You each unit cell in CCP has 1 but total all in FCP you can say over there that is uh, 4 spheres. Now, packing efficiency, again the same formula, volume of fill space upon total space. So, the fill space, as we know, there are four uh, spheres. One sphere volume is 4 by 3 pi r cube multiplied by 4 divided by, again, the total space, that is the total volume of the, uh, the cube. Now, the total volume we have already discussed and we have taken out 2 root 2. Now, keeping the value of A over there, we get 2 root 2 R cube. So, uh, calculating, you get 74%. So, what are we going to conclude over there? In uh, this, we can conclude that uh, the packing efficiency is best in phase-centered unit cell. And we have already discussed before, like many atoms are present over there. So that's the 74%. Then packing efficiency for the body-centered cubic uh, unit cells, 68%. And then packing efficiency for the simple cubic cell is 52.4% because there is no other atom present apart from the lattice point.
The atoms in the solid are properly arranged. It doesn't mean that they do not have any defect. There are defects. Now, crystal, we can say that there are two kinds of defects over there. One is point defect, other is line defect. Point defects are the irregularities or deviation from ideal arrangement around a point or an atom in the crystalline substance. So only at one point you will find this uh, deficiency. Line uh, defects as the name is suggesting, line defects are the irregularities or deviation from ideal arrangement in entire rows of the lattice point. So this is uh, the uh, flow chart. You can see over there defects. Now let's discuss this one by one. Different type of point defects. This is the impurity defect. Here you can see it's a crystal of sodium chloride, but there is an impurity of strontium chloride. Now you can see here the strontium is also there and the impurity over there. So this is the impurity but the point defect. At only one point the atom is not here. Now different type of stoichiometric defects are the non-ionic when some lattice uh, sites are vacant. So uh, we say that it's a vacancy defect. Suppose the atoms are arranged but few atoms are missing. So that is the vacancy defect and it decreases the density of the solid because the atoms are missing. Then interstitial uh, defect. A crystal is said to have interstitial defect when some constituent particles either atom or molecule occupy an interstitial site. So this defect results in increase in density of the substance because it is taking an interstitial site. Now then we have a Frankel or a dislocation uh, defect. In uh, this defect, the smaller ion, usually you know in cation and ion, cations are the smaller one. And uh, now you can locate from there, the, it is dislocated from its normal site to an interstitial site. It creates a vacancy defect in its original site and an interstitial defect at the new location. It does not change the density of the solid. Frankel defect is shown by ionic substance in which there is a large difference in the size of ion. You know cations uh, are usually smaller and anions are a little bigger in size. So that is uh, the one will be missing over there or we can say the dislocate, not missing, dislocation will be there. Now Scott key effect. In Schottky and ionic crystal, the, this, this type of point defect forms when oppositely charged ion leave their lattice site creating vacancy. Now you can see here the blue ones and the orange one, the cations and anions, one oppositely charged that is cation and one anion, sodium and chloride ions are missing over there. So that is, uh, they leave their lattice rather, uh, so that is the Schottky defect. Now let's classify the solids uh, on their electrical conductivity. Now as we know the, the, the solids are uh, uh, good conductors. Now the solids which conduct uh, the conductivity ranging between 10 to the power 4 to 10 to the power 7 ohm uh, minus 1 meter minus 1 are the good conductors. Insulator those are the solids which have very low conductivity that is ranging from 10 power minus 20 to 10 power minus 10 per ohm uh, meter. Conduction of electricity in metals. The conductivity of metals depend on the number of valence electrons available per atom. Partial filling or overlapping with a higher energy unoccupied conduction band enables the electrons to flow easily under applied electrical field. This result in conductivity of metals. If the gap between valence uh, band and the conduction band is large, electrons cannot jump to it. And such a substance has a low conductivity that makes it behave like an insulator. Conduction of electricity in semiconductors, the gap between the valence band and conduction band is small. 
This enables some electrons to germ to conduction band and exhibit their conductivity. Electrical conductivity of semiconductors increases with increase in temperature. Since more electrons can germ to the conduction band due to small gap between the valence band and conduction band. Examples of semiconductors are silicon and germanium. This is how it happens. This is what I explained to you. You can have, an, have a look over there. The gap, please check the gap. Now doping. The conductivity of metal is increased by adding an appropriate amount of suitable impurity. This process is known as doping. It can be performed with an impurity which is electron rich or electron deficient than the intrinsic semiconductor silicon or germanium. If example is if sodium chloride is doped with uh, 10 power minus 3 mole percent of strontium chloride, what is the concentration of the uh, cation vacancy? So one cation of strontium is equal to when cation vacancy in sodium chloride. Classification of substances based on their magnetic property. Paramagnetic substances. These are those substances which are weakly attracted by magnetic field. It is due to the presence of one or more unpaired electrons. Diamagnetic. Diamagnetic substances are weakly repelled by magnetic field. Diamagnetism is shown by those substances in which all the electrons are paired and there are no unpaired electrons. Ferromagnetic, these are those substances which are attracted uh, strongly by the magnetic field. Antiferromagnetic substances, they have equal number of parallel and anti-parallel magnetic dipoles resulting in a zero net dipole moment. Ferrimagnetic substances, they have unequal number of parallel and anti-parallel magnetic dipoles resulting in an, a dipole moment. So, here we have discussed in this video the packing efficiency, classification of solid based on their electrical conductivity, classification of substances based on their magnetic properties. Thank you.